joined UA4 for a short period. Was that mm-hmm. through Rod Smallwood then that that he recommended you? No, that actually came. I think that may have actually came from Joe Brown. That's right. Joe Brown was the manager or the owner of Tasco. And Tasco historically had done all of the shows for UFO in their big sort of period. Yeah. And word got round that UFO were looking for a new guitar player. And I, at the time I was the new kid on the scene. Yeah. And so they said, well, you, you should use Mike. And so I went out and, and I knew all of the Michael Schenker stuff. But I didn't really know the stuff after Schenker. Yeah. Um, so I had five days of rehearsal with, maybe four days, four days of rehearsal with UFO. And then we did a show at the Astoria at the Metal Hammer Christmas show. Okay. <clears throat> and that generated a lot of um, press and publicity for me. And then it, be, and I've always want, I've, I've always been the catalyst of the band that I'm in. Cause I don't actually like playing other people's songs. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, like a big part of playing music is to play the songs that I've written, you know, I was that that experience taught me that um, I love playing music, and I, but I, ultimately I only want to play music that I've had a hand in writing. Yeah. So that's why I've never joined anyone else's band over the years because I've never really liked to be told what to and do. Did you do any writing with Mr. Mog? Yeah, we did. We yeah. so we did the show, and in that lineup was uh, Jim Simpson on drums. The wonderful Paul Gray, who's a really, really lovely man, yeah, yeah. Um, great bass player, and they, there was a keyboard player as well uh, whose name escapes me, but I think his name was Eddie George, but I may be wrong. Um, so we did that show, but then Phil wanted to get back together with Pete Way. So then I started working with Phil and Pete, trying to write some songs, and it just wasn't a dynamic that worked for me. You know, I right. think I was 17 or 18 years of age, didn't drink, didn't take drugs. Um, <laughs> you were t- you were trying to write songs with Pete Wentz. Yeah, you were, you were. Yeah, and it was just a a cultural age thing. You know, these yeah. guys were like you know twenty five years older than me. They'd had all this experience under the belt, and I was like, uh, uh, Phil always used to call me New Pin because he said I was like a shiny New Pin. You know, because it was all exciting yeah. to me, and I used you know I used to wake up in the morning, let's play guitar, let's play guitar, and they were that wasn't their dynamic at all. You know, so. Uh, I just realized this isn't for me. And that's when I started to put together different lineups of Jagged Edge. And then we finally got a lineup that was good enough. Um, and that was why Rod was managing me. And we went on tour with Ozzy Osbourne on the No yeah. Rest for the Wicked tour. So that, that was, even though I'd done other tours, like the one you spoke of with Val Well, the first big tour I did was in Jagged Edge. We had Rob Armitage on vocals, who mm. used to sing in a band called Baby Taku. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of other guys and that was an eye-opening experience because all of a sudden you were playing in the premiership and there was a catalyst moment I'll never forget it there's many moments in my life which I always go like that was it that was a a a moment sliding doors yes exactly and so we we got together as a band and we'd written these songs and we had demos and there was record company interest and the first shows with Ozzy Osbourne was in Ireland so we flew out to Ireland and it was almost like something from a movie I remember arriving to the venue walking into the venue and literally bam bam and they went into Bark at the Moon and the lineup was Geezer Butler on bass Zach Wilde on guitar Randy Castillo on drums and I think I can't remember who the keyboard player was uh, but I think he used to be in Uriah Heep. But it was another level, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, the power and the ferocity of, of these musicians. And in my head, it was like, we ain't good enough. What I'm in now is not good enough. And I knew that right from that very second. Mm. And so we put that band, we did the tour, and it was, it was a great learning success. But as soon as it finished, I knew I had to change life.